Welcome to Life According to Scripture, where the Word of God is alive, anointed, and geared toward developing, improving, and strengthening your relationship with the Lord. Our teachings aim to spiritually nurture both new believers and strengthen those who are already mature in their faith. We're grateful to have you join us in the study of the Word of God today. We pray that it penetrates your heart deeply, bringing you even closer to the Lord. Greetings, radio audience. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Once again, this is Minister Caroline Gothier from Oasis of Faith Christian Center in Hesperia, California, in the United States of America. If you were with us last week, you remember that we talked a little bit about covenant and how God is a covenant God. And when he says something, he will see to it that it is brought to pass. Why is that important? Why is it important for the believer, the one who's accepted Jesus as Savior and Lord? 1 Corinthians 2, 12, as believers, those that have accepted Jesus as Savior and Lord, we've not received the spirit which is of the world. No, no, no. But the spirit which is of God, that's what we've received. Why is that so important for the believer? That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. That's really important. Why is that so important? You won't even know the things that we're talking about regarding covenant and covenant blessings without the Spirit of God. So he's given us the Spirit of God so that we can know, according to this scripture, so that we can know the things that Jesus provided for us in that covenant that he cut in that upper room we talked about last week. All the things that he provided, healing, deliverance, provision, all these things, we won't even know them according to 1 Corinthians 2.12 minus the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So now, it, in other words, there's not going to be any victory, any permanent victory in your life minus the Holy Spirit and minus the understanding of the covenant that God cuts with his people. Hallelujah. In order to have a victorious champion, a victorious life, the champions or the successful men and women of the Bible, they didn't live their lives without difficulties. You know, sometimes today in today's world, anything that happens in our life, we know we fall apart. But, you know, and we act like people in the past did not have issues. They had issues. The Bible talks about how God brought them through these things. And for the believer that believes the word of God, that obeys the word of God, that is sincere in the following of the Lord Jesus Christ, there's always a way provided out for you, no matter what Satan comes at you with. So the champions and the successful men and women of the Bible, they had difficulties. Many of them had great difficulties. We won't go into all of them here, but they, they, a lot of them had difficulties. But So we're not going to live a life on this earth without difficulties. But we have been provided a way out so that we walk in victory over those difficulties. Hallelujah. That's a covenant from God. That's his word. And he said if he spoke it, will he not bring it to pass? But you'll notice they, they came out victorious in those difficult situations. How come? Why is that? How is that possible? in some of these situations. They were ordinary people, just like you and me. But what made them triumphant or victorious in different times, they made a decision. And a lot of people today don't wanna make a decision to obey the word of God. They don't wanna make a decision to put God first in their life. They don't wanna make the decision that you live by every word that comes out of the mouth of God or out of the word of God. But these people in those days, in biblical times, they made a decision to obey the word of God. Even in the Old Testament, when, when, they, when, the, when the three Hebrew boys were, were thrown into the fire and, and the king wanted them not to pray and to bow down to him, what was their response? Their response was, we know our God will save us. We know he can save us. But even if he doesn't, we're not going to bow to you. Now that's a decision. That's a hardcore decision because they were going to kill them. They made a decision to obey the word of God no matter what the king said. Whether it was sickness they encountered, poverty, weakness, imprisonment, fear, hunger, divorce, uh, bankruptcy, it, it didn't matter. 
as long as they obeyed God's word, God's instructions, his power intervened on their behalf and brought them through to victory. And beloved, because the word of God says he's a covenant God and the same promises that he made to Abraham, his covenant partner, he made to us the heirs or the descendants of Abraham. So that same covenant blessing comes to us, that same covenant of victory, the same covenant of success. All these things, they belong to us as heirs and believers on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? So it was when they turned away from God, when they disobeyed God, when they disobeyed his word, that the door was then opened for tragedy. In, in one situation in Judges 6, starting with verse 1, Israel turned to worship false gods and then suffered seven years of horror at the hands of their enemy, the Midianites. Well, in those days, they built idols uh, out of all kinds of things and they worshiped, and that's what they would call a false god. Well, today, we don't so much build a, a physical thing to bow down and worship, but we do have things in our life that we worship. We put before God. It can be any number of things, but anything that you give God's place, because God's place is always to be number one, first place. Whenever you put anything or anybody in first place, you have a false God in your life. So disobedience to the word of God was very costly for them. For Israel, it was the building of calves that they were worshiping. Today, worshiping false gods takes many forms. Whatever you put, first place in your life is worshiping a false god. For some, it's money. Others, it's a house, a car, a job, family members. Anything you put before God, either way, it's a false god because it's in first place. And that's first place, that's God's place. Hallelujah. Now back to the Midianites. The Midianites' extreme cruelty caused Israel to retreat to the mountains and live in caves like animals. That was not God's will for them. Israel would plant crops only to have them overtaken by the Midianites. In those days, it was an agricultural society and one would perish without land and crops. The, the invading enemy would camp in the fields, destroying crops and reducing Israel to severe poverty and despair. Why, why was all this happening? Disobedience to God's word and worshiping false gods. But even though they strayed, God had mercy on them and he will have mercy on you. Thank God for his mercy. He sent a deliverer, someone to help them. By the name of Gideon, he sent to rescue them. Gideon didn't feel qualified. As many of you listening today, you don't feel qualified. You don't feel like you're good enough. You don't feel like you measure up to society's standards. Gideon didn't feel qualified either. He didn't feel qualified at all to rescue these people from, that, that God spoke in, into his life. Encouraging him with these words. Watch this. And, and think of him speaking this to you. He said, Gideon. Now, Gideon felt like nothing. He felt like nothing. He felt small. And God said to him, Gideon, and watch what he called him, mighty man of valor. Gideon didn't feel like a mighty man of valor. Gideon didn't look like a mighty man of valor. He didn't act like a mighty man of valor. He didn't talk like a mighty man of valor. He didn't even act like any, anything pertaining to a mighty man of valor. Yet, God said to him, Gideon, mighty man of valor. That's how he sees you. He, he doesn't see you the way the world has described you and caused you to feel like nothing and feel small and insignificant. Regardless of how we feel about ourselves, when God puts his hand on you and calls you to an assignment or to a purpose, regardless of how you feel, he qualifies you. He's the qualifier, not the, not the world. The, the, not, not the fact that they say you don't measure up because you're the wrong skin color or you don't have the education or, or whatever it is that they put on. You're too old. You're too young. Their, their qualifications mean nothing to God. When he gives you an assignment, 
when he calls you, when he gives you a purpose to fulfill, he qualifies you. How you feel about yourself isn't the qualifier. God's word is the qualifier. Hallelujah. And he said to Gideon, Gideon was a mighty man of valor. So guess what? Gideon was, he was a mighty man of valor because God said he was. So it didn't make any difference what anyone else said or how he felt or what he thought. God said it, so that's who he was. He became the mighty man of valor God called him to be, regardless of how he felt or thought or saw himself. You might be thinking, like Gideon said to the angel, if God is with me, watch this, this is what we say when we go through hard times, when things hit our families, when we lose a job, and all, we say, if God is with me, why are all these things happening? Why are all these things happening in my life? Beloved, we live in a fallen world and things happen. But the fact that things happen does not mean that they're going to be victorious over the believer. If you believe the word of God, if you act on the word of God, if you speak the word of God, if you behave, cause your behavior to line up with the word of God, you are going to come out victorious in the end. We mustn't allow ourselves to be like Gideon, so focused on the wrong, the bad things in our life, so focused on what's going wrong, so focused on a bad mood, so focused on depression, so focused on divorce, so focused on losing a job. We can't allow ourselves to stay focused on all these things and not recognize what God is doing in our lives. Gideon had an angel standing there talking to him and he was focusing he had an angel from God standing there talking to him giving him direction and what's he focusing on he's complaining about the negative things that are going on in his life beloved don't let that be you while God is doing one thing in your life and you're standing there focusing and and murmuring and complaining about all of the negative things in your life. Focus on what God is doing. If the doctor says you're sick, you're still here. If the doctor says, you're, uh, if the doctor says your, your children are, are, are not going to live, they're still here. If when when these, these words are spoken over you or over your family, you don't have to receive them. You don't have to accept them. But if you don't know the word of God, you can't come out victorious on the other side of this because you won't know what to say. You have to get in there and study the word of God. Get into a church where the word of God is taught so you can develop faith for them. Hallelujah. These things belong to you according to scripture. They come from the covenant of God. Healing is in the covenant of God. Deliverance, the covenant of God. All these things, they belong to you and your family when you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and he's your Savior and Lord. Beloved, we need to learn to gird up the loins of our mind. Scripture says, be not conformed to this world's way of thinking, but be transformed. What does that mean, be transformed? Be changed in your thinking. You can't do it on your own. It has to be done with the study of the word of God. Romans 12, 2 and 3, changing our thinking and lining our thinking up with the word of God will unlock many mysteries in, in, in the word of God for our life. How can I say that? Listen, according to Colossians 1, 26 and 27 is how I can say that. It says, even in the mystery which has been hidden from us from ages and generations, Scripture says, now it's made manifest to his saints, to you, the believer on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now that's all the time we have for today, beloved. You can reach us in the United States at Oasis of Faith Christian Center, 17520 Lemon Street, Hesperia, California, 92345. In the United States, you can also reach us at lifescripture at gmail.com. Now, until we come into your home again next week, I pray the blessing of God over your life and over your family. I thank you that you will take this word deep into your spirit and into your heart, that you will study it and meditate on it. And may God give thee increase.